and are on record as having tracked down the location of a dead springbok from a distance of nearly a mile away. The silver hairs intermingled with the black on the backs of these blackback jackal has sometimes led to their being referred to as silverback jackal. Dominance among jackal is established through bluff and threat. Physical fighting is rare. An aggressive warning is usually sufficient in maintaining the order of precedence at feeding. the lion does express his claim over the territory and the jackals display their submissive willingness to accept. These giraffes share drinking space at the water hole with a herd of kudu. The giraffe's keen eyesight and elevated point of view coupled with the kudu's exceptionally sharp sense of hearing can afford both animals protection from surprise attack. Here we have an exceptional view of a female kudu's chief defense, her large ears that capture and focus even the slightest sound. It's rare for a lion to kill an adult giraffe unless it's injured or old. The imposing horns of the male kudu discourage most predators. These lions didn't kill this giraffe, but merely found the carcass after it died. It's easier to feed on carrion than to exert the effort required to chase and bring down live and potentially dangerous prey. And lions are opportunistic animals. the day and the lion take frequent breaks in the shade while feeding. The warthog, a frequent prey of lion, cautiously drinks. The lappet-faced and white-backed vultures, like the jackal, will benefit from lion kills. the ruling lion of the territory arrives at the water hole with his pride of seven females and five young cubs. tend to follow the movements of a large pride of lion. With so many mouths to feed, there'll be a considerable amount of hunting, and this means carrion leftovers for the scavenger birds. This family appears well fed, so hunting must have been good for them in recent weeks. Marabou stork, also a scavenger, won't be left out if there's carrion available. Lions spend most of the 
the day resting and sleeping, restricting their movements to conserve energy and to prevent their body temperature from rising. Another marabou stork arrives. Notice the streamlined flying posture it assumes, as well as the pinpoint accuracy with which it alights on a very precarious perch. The sharp and powerful bill of the marabou is an extremely efficient tool for scavenging capable of tearing through even the tough hide of an elephant or hippo. As the heat diminishes, activity begins to increase at the water hall. Dusk is approaching, and when we return, the playful cubs reach their highest energy level. and invigorating air of the evening allows the lion to shake off their lethargy as their vitality rises to the level required for their nocturnal activities. The younger lions release their pent-up energies in rough and tumble play. The adults preserve their energy. They get all the exercise they need from the demands of hunting. When this adolescent male reaches full maturity, he'll leave the pride and join a bachelor group until he's ready to challenge for a territory of his own. He's been taught to hunt by his mother, so he'll be able to survive until he acquires a harem of females to do most of his hunting for him. behavior of the young lion is often an imitation of hunting technique, so it serves an educational as well as recreational purpose. Notice how the small cub, hiding in the cover of the fallen tree, fearlessly charges its older and larger sibling, just as it someday will attack its prey. exuberant roughhousing can go on for an hour or longer as the energy of the young lion seems boundless once the sun has gone down. The adolescent, while still not fully mature, is already beginning to respond to mating instincts. rays of the setting sun begin to disappear over the horizon, the lioness will soon begin her night stalking. Another day has come to an end, here at the water hole where lion come to drink. be one of the most efficient predators in Africa, but it's certainly one of the most powerful. Lions use the cover of darkness for most of their hunting activity. They also utilize their prey's dependence on water to draw them into exposed positions. As we've seen, lions seize opportunity whenever possible in their quest to survive and flourish in Africa's often hostile environment.
The fastest animal on Earth, cheetahs can run at speeds up to 60 miles per hour. This makes them both beautiful and deadly. Despite being an expert hunter and carnivore, cheetah young are totally dependent on their mothers during their early lives. Join us as we follow a family of cheetah over a period of months and learn more about the Kalahari cheetah. The climate is hot and arid. There's very little surface water. Yet surprisingly, wildlife abounds in many areas of the Kalahari Desert. The cheetah is one of the many species who through evolutionary adaptation have adjusted their metabolism and their habits to meet the demands of this environment. They can survive with little water and derive most of the liquid they need from their prey. The springbok gazelle are the mainstay of the cheetah's diet. They too are independent of surface water, deriving the liquid they need from the vegetation they eat. The Kalahari is an ideal hunting ground for the cheetah. The open grassland with few obstacles offers little cover in which his prey might escape his keen eyesight. And it provides him with the running room to utilize his chief weapon, speed and pursuing and bringing down his prey. Cheetahs stand just under three feet tall at the shoulder and are four and a half to five feet long, not including the tail, which is about two and a half feet long. They weigh between 110 and 145 pounds. The cheetah is supremely well adapted for running with long slender legs and compactly muscled bodies. Their supple spines bend almost into a hoop between leaps, giving the cheetah a powerful spring launch as their feet come to the ground for the next leap forward. Cheetah are the most efficient predators of the cat family. The Gemsbach antelope, which weighs over 400 pounds, is relatively safe from the cheetah. They rarely attack an animal much larger than themselves. Catching prey is one thing, bringing them down is another. The same holds true for this red hartebeest. Even attacking in a group, the cheetahs stand to sustain serious injuries confronting such formidable opponents as this. In addition to size, this herd of wildebeest also enjoys the safety of numbers. While cheetah may attempt to take a single large animal that has wandered away, they'll seldom charge into the herd. The springbok gazelle remains the most likely candidate for the cheetah. They're comparatively safe from other predators because of their own speed and agility. Their sleek bodies and long, thin legs give them quick acceleration and add length and spring power to their leaps. They travel in herds, providing many watchful eyes to survey the area for predators. As their large ears suggest, they also have a keen sense of hearing. A patch of white fur on the springbok's back erects when it's frightened, functioning as an alarm signal to the rest of the herd. This behavior, called starting, is another alarm signal. Such a display of agility may also discourage some predators from giving pursuit. Cheetahs seldom hunt during the hottest part of the day, due to the intense body heat they generate while running. Resting in the shade not only protects them from the sun's rays, but also provides the perfect camouflage for which their coloration has been adapted. And their spotted coats break up their outlines and blend in with the shadows. Under such cover, the cheetah can see without being seen. It's unusual to find cheetahs in trees as they are not known for their climbing ability. in the wild is no easy task. A few of days searched the Kalahari for 28 days before they discovered their first cheetah tracks. Unlike other cats, the cheetah does not retract its claws as he walks. This gives him added traction when running.
Sharp's Pachita depends primarily on his keen eyesight to detect prey and to alert him to danger. The slightest movement will catch his attention. This cheetah has caught sight of a potential danger, the cheetah being serious enough to want a quiet retreat into cover. The leopard is more powerful than the cheetah and can bring down much larger game. He lacks the cheetah's speed, however, and must stalk his prey and pounce from close range. He usually hunts at night. The cheetah, a daytime hunter, has a prominent brow that shades his eyes from the sun. The lion is something of a boy who will often steal a cheetah's catch. Exhausted after a kill, the cheetah will often relinquish his hard-earned meal. Solitary by nature, the male cheetah leaves his mate after breeding. It's the female's responsibility to feed, raise, and train the cubs by herself. Here we'll observe a family consisting of three one-year-old cubs and their mother as they steal themselves to set forth on a combination hunting and training foray. Unsuspecting family of Springbok will provide today's lesson. The mother cheetah, having four mouths to feed, could chase down and kill a full-grown gazelle, but the younger ones are easier training for her cubs. The field days attempt to capture the action on film, not an easy task with the cheetah's speed.
accounts, in the coming months, must learn the hunting skills necessary to bring down their own prey. The Fugues and their crew have taken a break to rest and to repair the trucks and equipment. A Kalahari inhabitant always close at hand was the ground squirrel, whose community occupied a burrow near the camp, and he visited frequently hoping for handouts. Every movement in the camp came under the watchful scrutiny of the ground squirrel. A lilac-breasted roller also seemed curious about the crew's activities.